Yeah, so let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Space Science webinar series hosted by the Center for Space Science in collaboration with the UAE Space Agency. Uh, before we start the webinar, I have uh, two announcements. Uh, one is that you must have seen from Tamara's email that uh, all our webinars are now available online. You can go to the Center for Space Science website and access all our webinars from there. Or you can simply go to YouTube, just type Center for Space Science and you'll see our channel so you can subscribe it. Uh, all the videos so far have been uh, made available there. Uh, secondly, next week, uh, the UAE Space Agency is uh, organizing a meeting and several members of our center will be attending that. So that is why we will not be able to host the webinar next week. And so uh, we'll see you a week after that. With that, uh, let us get started with today's uh, talk. Uh, today's speaker is Dr. Yi Shu, uh, who is an assistant professor of State Key Lab of Lunar and Planetary Sciences at Macau University of Science and Technology in Macau. Uh, she got her PhD from University of Pittsburgh. Her research interests include uh, microwave uh, radar data analysis, properties of lunar regolith and Martian soil, uh, ice deposits in Martian and lunar polar regions. So very interesting background. And so welcome uh, to the Center for Space Science Yi, and now I'm handing it over to you. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Yishu from Macau University of Science and Technology. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Audrey for uh, inviting me to give a talk here. Uh, it's my pleasure to present our recent study about the common crater at the lunar uh, far side. I'm ha very happy to have this chance to uh, talk with all of you uh, online yeah, during this difficult time. Uh, our work mainly analyzed the uh, ground penetrating radar data of Chang'e 4 mission and uh, to show the uh, subsurface structure and the properties of the uh, surveying area of a lunar rover. Okay, um, since I mainly use the data from Chang'e missions, I will briefly introduce uh, this machine. Chang'e is uh, the name of uh, China's uh, moon exploration program. It's named after the goddess of uh, the moon in Chinese ancient story. And uh, the goddess has a pet rabbit called Yu Tu, which is also the name of the uh, rover. Uh, of uh, Chang'e 3 and Chang'e 4 mission. It has uh, three phases, opting, uh, soft landing, and uh, sample return. Um, Chang'e 1 and uh, Chang'e 2 belongs to the first stage of the uh, program, and uh, Chang'e 3, Chang'e 4 belong to the second stage, and uh, Chang'e 5 and uh, Chang'e 6 missions are the third stage. And uh, you may uh, notice that uh, uh, each stage has uh, two missions. The second one is the backup plan for the first one. So it usually has a similar uh, basic uh, structure of the uh, previous one. For example, both Chang'e 1 and uh, Chang'e 2 has a, a moon opting satellite. And uh, uh, the second one usually uh, improved the uh, uh, performance of uh, some, some of the scientific payloads over the first mission and has some uh, additional uh, task. For, the, for example, uh, Chang'e 2 has to uh, take a high resolution image of the landing area of next mission, Chang'e 3 mission. Uh, the scientific objectives of Chang'e 1 and uh, Chang'e 2 is to, uh, to obtain three-dimensional image of the lunar surface with a stereo uh, camera. Is there any problem? No. Oh, okay. okay. A stereo camera and uh, laser elevator. 
and uh, it's also collect the uh, obtain the distribution of some uh, useful elements and the material below the lunar surface with the VNIR spectrum and uh, gamma and uh, X-ray spectrum meter. Uh, it uh, detected the uh, uh, properties of uh, lunar soil with the microwave uh, radiometer and uh, explored the space environment between the moon and the earth and above uh, the lunar surface with uh, high energy particle detector and uh, solar wind ion detector. So uh, both uh, missions uh, have uh, completed uh, successfully. Uh, the orbiter of Chang'e 1 uh, had worked for one and a half year, and for the Chang'e 2, it works on uh, it uh, finished the work on the orbiter of the uh, of the moon, and then had a follow up uh, task of take an image of uh, uh, asteroid Totatis. And uh, you may notice the uh, the height of the orbit is uh, lower than Chang'e 1, so it, the spatial resolution of the Chang'e 2 data is uh, a little bit higher. And for the Chang'e 3 and the Chang'e 4 mission, it contains a lander and a rover. Um, the scientific payloads in the lander are, so I have to move focus here. Uh, mass cam, descent cam, extreme ultraviolet image, and the ultraviolet telescope. Uh, the purpose is to take benefits of uh, airless body of uh, the moon and uh, the slow rotation of the moon to make observations in the near uh, ultraviolet uh, uh, region. The rover has the payload of a pan cam, uh, alpha particle X-ray spectrum, and uh, BIS uh, NIR spectral imaging spectral uh, spectrometer, and uh, ground penetrating radar. And uh, I use the radar data here. Uh, the channel of for me, uh, 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 actually the. The landing part of the Chang'e 3 was uh, very successful, and uh, it's also the first uh, soft landing since uh, uh, 1976. Uh, the Yu 2 rover uh, moved uh, uh, on the surface of the moon and uh, collected some data for about uh, two uh, lunar days. However, at the uh, the third lunar night, some uh, mechanical control issues happened and the crypt uh, uh, rover. Uh, due to this problem, the U2 rover cannot uh, move. So it can still, uh, people can still receive the signal from the U2 rover, but it, it, it's there, there, uh, there was no new data. So because of this reason, you can see the launching time of the Chang'e 4 mission uh, was delayed. The engineer team is uh, uh, examining uh, the whole system and uh, try to figure out uh, where it goes wrong, uh, where it went wrong. And uh, then, uh, in the year of two thousand and nineteen, uh, Chang'e four uh, did another uh, successful landing, and uh, uh, also. Uh, it's our first uh, soft landing on the far side of the moon. Uh, in addition to the payloads of uh, Chang'e 3, Chang'e 4 has uh, four payloads developed by foreign countries, uh, Netherlands, Germany, Sweden, and uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, for example, the advanced uh, small analyzer for neurons uh, is a payload from Sweden. And uh, later this year, around uh, November, in the November of uh, this year, we will launch the Chang'e 5 mission. It's a sample return mission. So uh, we haven't uh, done this before. So uh, we are all very excited to wait for the outcome of this mission. And of course, Chang'e 6 also will obtain some samples uh, from the moon. Um, 
The data product of the first two machines include some uh, global DOM model with a different uh, spatial resolution uh, from uh, 500 meter uh, and to and uh, 120 meter. And the Chang'e 2 has better uh, spatial res uh, resolution, the data. And uh, the finest uh, resolution is uh, five, seven meter. And we have the Chang'e 2 DEM model uh, the spatial uh, resolution is 20 meter and uh, 15 meter. And uh, the daytime, nighttime microwave uh, uh, brightness temperature map of the moon, uh, it has uh, four frequencies, three and uh, 7.8, 19.35 and uh, 37 gigahertz. Uh, and some uh, element uh, uh, distribution map, uh, okay. Sorry, uh, this is the elevation map of the from the Chang'e One mission, and uh, uh, the Chang'e Two mission also have a follow up task to image the Totatis uh, asteroid, and uh, that's the result of the this uh, task. And uh, if you are interested in this data, you can uh, go to this website. Uh, the link is here. Um, and it has the English uh, language here. Uh, if you are interested in specific mission, you can click one of uh, the, one of them to see the details of the mission, and it also uh, leads to the page of all the scientific data of this mission. And uh, uh, if you are interested in the data product I just mentioned then you can access uh, here data release and you click here it has uh, uh, a lot of list of the different uh, data product. Uh, in order to download the data you should uh, register uh, in the website and uh, uh, there are other uh, things like multimedia, lunar map, you, you can explore this website by yourself. And when you click this login part, it will shows up the uh, very, very simple uh, registering, uh, registration um, form. I feel it by myself and it uh, take, it's very soon. You can uh, go to your uh, uh, reply email uh, like immediately and you can then use the account information and the password to download the data. Um, here is the photo of the Chang'e 3 the lander and the rover. The lander has a mass of uh, 1,200 kilogram and uh, its uh, landing leg uh, span about uh, like 4.7 meter. Uh, the rover vehicle uh, has a mass of uh, 120 kilogram. And uh, it has the uh, stereo camera and the navigation cameras here and the communication uh, antenna to send the data back to the Earth. Uh, the height of the rover is about uh, 100 and uh, I'm sorry, 1.5 meter tall. And uh, it used the solar, band, uh, solar panel to generate the electrical power. Uh, the rover operates uh, through two weeks and then charges its battery to survive the long lunar night. Um, but for the Chang'e 4, the situation is a little bit different because um, uh, it's landed on the lunar far side. So lunar far side does not face to the Earth. So the rover cannot send the data directly to the Earth. Then we use a relay a satellite called Chie Chao to uh, facilitate the communication between the Chang'e 4 lander and the rover on the far side to the uh, ground uh, stations on Earth. So from the animation, you can see the uh, here, the lander and the rover send a signal to the satellite, and then satellite send the signal back to the Earth. And the uh, 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 payload uh, developed by Netherlands uh, was installed uh, on this uh, relay satellite.
Okay. Sorry, the, it's a little bit slow for this. Uh, this is the landing video of uh, Chang'e 4. Okay, yeah, it uh, landed successfully. And uh, this is another video for the lander release the rover to the surface of the moon. And the lander takes uh, photos of the rover. <coughs> and then the ARO uh, camera also captured the figure of uh, Chang'e 3 and uh, Chang'e 4. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Chang'e 4 landers and the uh, rover. The uh, large arrow shows the uh, position of the uh, lander and the small one indicates the position of the rover. Uh, they are not uh, far away from each other. And for the Chang'e 3 lander, you can see it's very close to a, a large crater. This crater has a, a diameter of uh, 450. And uh, so basically Chang'e 3 rover moved uh, on, on the ejector blanket of this uh, crater. And uh, the age of the crater is also young, uh, around uh, 10 day to 8 day million years. <clears throat> and the area of the uh, lander is uh, very small, it's about one pixel of the image. So uh, we need the shadow to determine the position, to identify the position of the two uh, instruments. Um, and the Chang'e 4, it landed uh, inside the Von Kamen crater in the uh, SPA basin. So uh, first of all, I will uh, briefly uh, talk about the geological settings of the two landing sites. Uh, this figure shows all the landing site of uh, previous uh, missions. And uh, the red one shows the lunar mission, and the blue one uh, indicates the Apollo missions, and the yellow one indicates the surveyor uh, missions. And the uh, Chang'e 3 mission landed uh, in the northern uh, Mare Ingrain, and uh, the latitude is uh, re uh, relatively higher than other missions, and uh, it hasn't uh, been explored. Uh, uh, by rovers before. The right one shows the titanium map uh, generated with ARROC uh, images. Um, the basalts uh, uh, beneath the landing side have a higher uh, titanium than the one uh, to the north part. Uh, Indicator there are two episodes of uh, lava infilling in vents, uh, and these two have uh, different uh, compositions. And the Chang'e 3 landed uh, uh, in the part in the geological unit is uh, relatively young, uh, uh, around uh, 2.3 and 2.5 billion years. Uh, it's also richer in olivine, 
uh, compared to uh, other places. Um, this is the Chang'e 4 landing site. Uh, it's uh, in the northwestern part of the South Bay, uh, SPA Basin. And uh, we all know SPA Basin is the uh, largest and oldest impact uh, basin on the moon. Its diameter is really large. It's about uh, uh, 2,500 kilometer, and it covers uh, uh, most of the southern far side. Uh, the previous uh, study shows that uh, it may excavate uh, subcrustal and uh, upper mantle material. So it could uh, bring a lot of uh, highlights, uh, in, insights into uh, early planetary differentiation and uh, has a lot of scientific interest in this area. Mm, so based on the remote sensing data, uh, there there's isn't many olivine rich uh, mineral evidence uh, uh, that is uh, abundant in Earth's mantle with, uh, in the, with the remote sensing data. They didn't find uh, a lot of uh, these olivine rich um, material, mineral. Um, and uh, the spectrum data from U22 rover also have the similar observation result. They, then to find the uh, olivine here. And the Von Kármán crater, um, it's, uh, pro it was uh, formed in the pre nectarian year and uh, it was infilled with uh, male basalts uh, during the ingrain period. And later you can see there are a lot of impact uh, craters uh, around this uh, uh, region. So uh, a lot of uh, impact events uh, deliver the data to the crater floor. Uh, and if we zoom in, we can see some uh, high albedo uh, lines here. Uh, it's, if you trace back to this line and it goes to this direction, probably toward the, to the Finson uh, crater. So the surface of the Von Kármán crater uh, floor it was uh, covered, uh, it's covered by the ejector from the Finson crater. And uh, you probably notice there is another crater in the western uh, part of the uh, Von Kármán crater. And uh, if we keep zooming in, and that's the landing site of uh, Chang'e 4. Uh, we also named uh, several nearby craters with uh, famous uh, uh, Chinese uh, places. Uh, this one is the uh, Chang'e 3 landing site and uh, the rover as well. Uh, in this image, you can see that uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, rocks on the surface. And uh, from this image, you can see a uh, very uh, meter sized poodles. And uh, there are a lot of uh, rocks around the, on the crater rim and uh, very, very rocky walls and the uh, rims of this crater it means it's probably a fresh crater here because I just mentioned the, the landing site on, uh, of Chang'e 3 mission is a, a relatively young geological unit. Then I will show you the uh, photo of the landing site of uh, Chang'e 4. You can see compared to the Chang'e 3, we didn't see large poodles, uh, especially the middle, uh, meter-sized uh, poodles here. Uh, it's basically very uh, flat and a smooth surface. So uh, because the this part we, we mentioned uh, um, is a, a very old geological unit, uh, you can still see uh, there are a lot of uh, impact craters, uh, some of them degraded but we didn't see uh, big rocks and uh, very uh, rough surface. 
like uh, uh, like the Chang'e three landing site there. So if you just look at the photo, they are very different. Chang'e three and Chang'e four machine. So um, in this work, I uh, mainly use the lunar penetrating radar (LPR). Uh, it can see um, uh, the depths uh, to uh, in the range of uh, uh, hundreds of meters. So within the this range, what can we observe? On the surface, uh, regolith and. Uh, in the bottom of the, uh, in this range is the uh, mirror basalt, and uh, something between is the transition zone here. Uh, for the lunar regolith, uh, we already know that uh, it's on the very superficial uh, surface of the moon, and uh, most of the room surface is covered by this uh, fragmented layer, and uh, it's results from the continuous impact of the large and the small meteoroids and the, uh, and the, the uh, bombardment on the lunar surface. Uh, why it's important to study uh, lunar regolith? Because basically it's the data source of all the information about the moon. For example, if you use uh, direct measurement in the uh, previous mission, you you want to penetrate too deep, right? The, the materials uh, we collected uh, uh, collected in the Apollo mission is uh, the, the ring, the depth uh, does not exceed uh, three meters. So um, the samples, the both rocks and the soils collected from the regolith. And uh, the remote sensing approach, you know, the penetration depth of the uh, these uh, short uh, short wave, and uh, they cannot penetrate uh, too deep. They also reveal the properties and the composition information uh, within very shallow region. And uh, so the composition and this uh, structure of the regolith preserve the important uh, information about the geology and the impact history of the uh, moon. And uh, currently, we, uh, the understanding of the lunar regolith, uh, the, for example, the thickness distribution based on the crater shape method, uh, we obtain the uh, regular thickness in the male area is about uh, four to five meter, and uh, it's thicker in the highland region. And uh, people obtain the composition and the physical properties uh, from the uh, uh, lunar samples and the uh, direct measurement uh, in the landing site. And the formation process of the lunar regolith uh, is uh, very complicated. And the evolution process involved the impact uh, process and uh, uh, some of the solar cosmetic, uh, uh, cosmic uh, particles strike the lunar surface and some high energy particles uh, produce uh, nuclear re reactions to depths of uh, several meters of uh, lunar surface. So it's uh, complicated. And the formation uh, speed of lunar uh, regolith depends on the uh, impact uh, flux on the lunar surface, properties of the surface material and the other things. And the, in the uh, deeper part of the radar observation, we can see the structure of uh, male basalt. And uh, the, uh, the male basalt cover as 17% uh, of the lunar surface. Um, and the, the far side compared to the near side, the far side of the canyon zones uh, have been significantly shorter and uh, less extensive. Um, the, the asym, uh, asymmetrical uh, distribution because of uh, differences uh, in crustal thickness 
and uh, uh, asymmetrical distribution of uh, heat producing elements in the crust and the mantle. And uh, there are other studies uh, uh, think uh, the geological consequence of uh, the large SPA forming uh, impact may result in this uh, uh, asymmetrical distribution of uh, male basalt in the near side and the far side. And uh, to investigate the reason of this uh, distribution, uh, people usually use the volume of uh, basalt that uh, reflects the time integrated uh, volcanic, uh, volcanic uh, history of the moon. However, if we want to know the volume of the basalt, we need to know the thickness of the male layer. And uh, these numbers are poorly constrained. Uh, previously, uh, we we can see literature use uh, crater morphology method, multi-spectral data, gravity data, and of course radar data uh, to reveal the thickness of this uh, male layer. And uh, the Chang'e 4 radar data can also offer the information of the uh, thickness information about each lava eruption event happened in Fen Kamen crater and the, also the time sequence of these modifications event. So uh, methods and the data, um, we use uh, the lunar penetrating radar LPR. It has two channels. Uh, one is uh, uh, channel one, and uh, the center frequency is 60 megahertz. Compared to the channel two, the frequency is lower. So it can penetrate, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I need to switch the number here, sorry. Uh, it can penetrate uh, deeper toward uh, like 100 meter, but the resolution is uh, coarser than the uh, channel two. And the channel one antenna is uh, mounted uh, on the back of the rover, and then the channel two uh, was uh, placed on the bottom of the rover. Uh, in addition to the ro uh, radar data, we also use the X-ray spectrometer for the uh, element abundance analyze because this uh, iron and the titanium abundance affects the uh, dielectrical properties of the lunar regolith. We also use other uh, remote sensing data to help us to understand uh, the structure, the subsurface structure. Uh, so for the Chang'e 4, uh, it moves, it's still moving, the, the rover is still working and uh, uh, currently it uh, has been traveled uh, for uh, Five, over 500 meter. And uh, in this talk, I only show the first uh, 17 months data. And for the Sun 3, uh, it also collects about uh, 100 meter, uh, the, the data around the 100 meter pass. But uh, it stopped here because of the uh, mechanical control problem. And uh, basically, when the rover moves, the radar is on and uh, collect uh, the data around this path. So here is the uh, working principle of the ground penetrating radar. The radar transmitter the path uh, through the antenna to the surface and uh, receive the reflecting and uh, scattering the signals and uh, once it uh, reaches the discontinuity around the, the boundary of the material, the radar signal will be reflected back to the receiver, back to the antenna. So the radar can receive the da data and uh, based on the radar data, we can see the uh, subsurface structure. And uh, uh, here I will uh, briefly introduce the processing steps of the radar data. These are the raw data. So 
you couldn't uh, tell too much information from the raw data and uh, we need to first uh, align Align on the traces uh, around the vertical direction because the machine, uh, the ARPR is was sh shut down and turned on, you know, frequently. So we have this uh, uh, different offset here, and then uh, one uh, the rover also stopped to do other uh, scientific uh, exploration task. So when it stops there, it still collect the data. So we will have a lot of data, radar data, at the same uh, in the same position. So then we have to remove the, some redundant data here, and uh, then uh, apply the bandpass filter to improve the signal noise ratio. Uh, and also background noise, uh, background noise removed to uh, re further reduce the noise introduced by the instrument. And then we do the uh, weak signal enhancement. So you can see here, you don't see any signal. And right now you can see some signal in the deeper part. And finally, we do more adjustment like uh, Add the position information, depth information, and make it a color uh, image so you can see the subsurface structure. And then we use another method uh, to uh, infer the structure of the lunar regolith by uh, estimate the dielectrical constant of the lunar regolith. Uh, we use the hypopolar method. Uh, this formula explains the uh, working principle. Basically, we extract a, a hyperbola here from the radar gram and we calculate the, we based on its shape to calculate the dielectrical uh, uh, constant. And uh, that's the result of uh, Chang'e 3 and uh, Chang'e 4. We can see the Chang'e 4 is, uh, is, uh, are the red dots and the blue ones are the Chang'e 3 machines. And the Chang'e 4 and the Chang'e 3 has very distinct uh, features. For the Chang'e 4, you can see within a uh, very deep range, it, the permittivity is uh, very similar. But for the Chang'e 3, it has this uh, drastic uh, uh, jump from the some shallow region to the deep region means there is a boundary between these two. And then further we infer the uh, uh, um, previous I showed average permittivity and then I uh, provide the instant permittivity and then we can obtain derived uh, bug density of the lunar regulus. And you can see at the top Section it increase really very fast the bug density, and then uh, becomes stable. I also derived the loss tangent of the lunar regolith based on the signal loss after we do the spreading uh, uh, correction, and then we can infer the loss tangent from these uh, uh, lines, the dash lines and uh, then obtain the titanium and uh, iron abundance from the, this formula. Um, compared to Chang'e 3 and uh, Chang'e 4, we also found uh, the detection depths of the uh, LPR radar are very different. Chang'e 4 can penetrate uh, much deeper uh, you can observe the, the time actually represents the depth of the, uh, the signal. The main reason could be the iron and the titanium abundance uh, because they, are, they will affect the loss tangent greatly and uh, so as the signal loss. And there are other reasons for that. And then I will show you the channel one result, which is uh, a little bit deeper, 50 meter to 300 meter. And uh, here we use two different methods to show the reflector, the subsurface reflector observed by the uh, Chang'e one, uh, I'm sorry, Chang'e four, uh, channel one um, radar result. 
and these reflectors uh, could be uh, formed by uh, by the contrast permittivity contrast between the basalt it's very solid and the loose uh, lunar regulus and it will create this reflection here and uh, we observe uh, five reflectors here and some of them have uh, the rising uh, trend and uh, I, I want to discuss the details here and uh, we do the simulation to uh, testified our interpretation of this radar result because there are a lot of scattering signals in the bottom. So we guess uh, this layer actually are the uh, large mountain of ejector delivered from the distant or neighboring craters. And uh, those are the uh, male basalt in with uh, flooded in within the von Kármán crater. And we test a different uh, loss tangent. And this one is uh, deri derived from the radar signal. So we think it's close to the real situation. And we pick the, the loss tangent value smaller than this one and a larger loss tangent. And it gives different result. And this one, of course, is uh, uh, similar to the radar observation results. And then based on the radar result, we also did a, a trend service analysis. Uh, as I mentioned before, the uh, rover will collected a lot of data at the same uh, point because it has other tasks. So we can add this data, add up this data to further reduce the noise level. And then we will find that the depth profile around this path, there will be small elevation variation. And based on this elevation variation, we do the trend service analysis uh, to estimate the relatively large scale systematic variation of the subsurface layer. <clears throat> because uh, we derived uh, five layers here and the three of them we suspect they are from the <clears throat> interface between the male basalt and the uh, lunar regulus. And uh, the green one, uh, green ones uh, are from the uh, ejector of uh, uh, impact uh, events. And then we found that there are other evidence. Sorry. <clears throat> evidence of uh, multiple uh, infilling events with the geomorphological uh, feature of this uh, large dome. This dome is uh, located in the uh, western part of the uh, the uh, crater, and uh, if you observe these uh, lines, the light blue, and uh, this shows the topography uh, data here, and then you, you will see there are layered structure here. So it means it could happen like there are multiple uh, lava infilling uh, events. And uh, the height differences here is uh, 50 meter and uh, 100 meter, which is uh, quite similar, comparable to the thickness estimation uh, with uh, radar data. And then uh, we have this uh, olivine abundance map. Uh, it was uh, uh, derived from the Kakuya multiband imager. And, and these fresh uh, crater, a little bit large uh, crater, is close to the Chang'e 4 landing site. And uh, you can see in its uh, ejector, there are three layers uh, showing very different uh, abund uh, olivine abundance. So, um, and the excavation depth of this fresh crater is about 300 meters, which is also uh, close to the de detection 
limit of ARPR channel one data. And these different uh, uh, olivine uh, abundance suggests that uh, there are also different uh, distinct uh, layers we, uh, uh, beneath the landing site. You have uh, about five minutes. Oh, okay. And then people, uh, based on our radar data, they derived the time sequence of the uh, Von Kármán crater happened happened in Von Kármán crater. I will skip that. Um, and uh, some short conclusions from of our result, and then I will talk about Tianwen Wang. Um, and we were, we have shown that LPR reveals very different uh, lunar regular structure and properties at uh, Chang'e three and uh, Chang'e four landing site, and uh, that's the difference. Also, LPR provides uh, direct evidence of multiple lava infilling evidence occurred within Von Kármán crater. And uh, let, let me talk about the Tianwen Wang mission. For the, the first uh, China's uh, first uh, uh, mass exploration mission, I think it's a very ambitious uh, mission because it consists of three parts, orbiter, lander, and the rover. And uh, none of these uh, has accomplished uh, by China before. So I think it's a very, very challenging uh, task. Um, the launching date of this uh, Tianwen One mission is uh, July 23rd. It was uh, very successful, and uh, now the uh, the uh, orbiter is on the way to the moon. Uh, the Tian the scientific objectives of Tianwen One mission covers variety of area including the morphology and the geological structure, uh, the surface soil properties and the water ice distribution, mainly the subsurface water ice distribution, and analyze the surface material composition and uh, measure the Martin climate environment and the, at the surface and the, obtain the magnetic take a field uh, result of the mass. The landing site, uh, originally there were two landing sites. And now because um, people have done some simulation, atmosphere simulation, and show that there is less uh, possibility of uh, dust storm activities in site two, so now the current uh, landing site is in the uh, site two uh, within the uh, utopia uh, plant here. here. Uh, the scientific uh, ob orbiter, the orbiter, um, scientific payloads on the orbiter, there are uh, seven, seven of them. Like uh, there are two cameras, high freak, uh, high resolution and uh, moderate resolution, and uh, mineralogy uh, spectrum, and uh, mass uh, magnetic uh, meter, and uh, radar as I mentioned uh, we will have and uh, uh, mass neuron and the uh, neural particle analyzer and a very low frequency analyzer. Uh, the orbiter the mag. Magnetic meter uh, will measure the magnetic fields and the uh, surrounding mass to study the uh, space environment of mass and the interaction with the solar wind. Uh, the, this one, this instrument uh, uh, is to study the solar wind mass interaction by measure the ions and the energetic uh, neuron atoms near the mass. Uh, the orbiter also provide a communication link to the rover. So the ro rover will send the data to the uh, uh, orbiter and the orbiter will send the, rover back, uh, the data back to the uh, ground station. And it also will do some scientific observations of, uh, for one marking year. Um, these are the scientific payloads on the rover. And uh, there are also uh, uh, radars 
to read us channel one and channel two on the rover and uh, multi-spectrum camera and uh, navigation camera and uh, component detector. Um, the lander and the rover will perform a soft landing on a uh, Martin ser service two or three months after arrival of the spacecraft. The spacecraft will arrive in the February next year. So uh, we expect to receive the data from the rover uh, around the May uh, next year if this mission is successful. And the rover is expected to be in operation for about uh, uh, 90, uh, 90 marking days. And uh, I give the link of a special issue of all the payloads of the scientific payloads of a Tianwen one mission. And uh, you can find the detailed design parameters and also ground calibration of the instrument uh, within the special issue of the, uh, those papers. Okay, uh, thank you all, sorry for the delay. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much. This was uh, yeah. nice. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, maybe I will make a remark. Um, I want to thank you for a very nice and informative talk. <clears throat> and um, also my congratulations to the Chinese people for the enormous uh, technological accomplishments. It turned out I was there in Beijing on the day um, Changi 1 was launched in 2007. And I remember the excitement uh, associated with that. Um, I see there are four questions on the Q&A. So I will not take any more time and uh, let uh, you answer those questions. Thank you so much again for taking the time. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so first of all, I will ask. Uh, I will answer that the first question is to: uh, Is it possible to compare result of ARPR with uh, satellite-based data such as the Kakuya? Uh, I think the shared data is for the uh, Martin data, so we want to do direct comparison. But for the future Chinese mission, if we collect the radar data from the rover, of course, we will compare with the shared data. But although the detection range is a little bit different, uh, I would like to mention that the radar on the orbiter here, the frequency, central frequency is between the shared and the masses. So, uh, so we expect to see the exploration range also is some, somewhere between them. And the ARPR um, of Chang'e 3 and Chang'e 4, it is possible to compare with the Kakuya data. Actually, we did uh, do the comparison with uh, uh, Kakuya using the Chang'e 3 data. The, the problem is uh, the resolution is uh, quite different. So the Kakuya will provide a large range of the uh, depths of the subsurface reflector, but uh, for the Chang'e 3 or Chang'e 4, it uh, has a much fine resolution here. So we can only say it's within the range, but we, we are not sure if they are exactly the same. The second one is for the Kakuya data in the Chang'e 4 landing site, I heard that the, uh, it, it has some issue uh, with, because the Chang'e 4 uh, landing site, the roughness of that landing site is relatively high. It also will create some noise in the uh, Kakuya data. So we may not be able to see the subsurface refractor. Oh, okay, that's the first question. Can you go to the Q &A? There are some in Q and A. questions there. Q and A. Let me see. Oh, oh I see. Uh, different layers. Yeah, the first question. Yes, I agree with you. I think that they are from different uh, impact uh, events. So after one in, uh, event, it delivered some ejector on top of another one. And then uh, another impact event happened and it delivered another layer. 
on top of that. Uh, did you find evidence of water ice? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, we didn't find any water ice. Uh, how Tianwen analyzed the surface material comp uh, composition is about organics. Um, okay, uh, for the Tianwen one, I think it has this uh, Martin service. Sorry. Don't work very well. Okay, Martin service component detector. I suggest you, uh, and also this uh, multi spectral camera, I will suggest you to look into the paper uh, at the link uh, via the link here. Uh, sorry. Scattering at the low depths, they may be a sign of water abundance at the surface. With an eye testing, we can make sure of right. Um, I think uh, we actually used the uh, uh, iron and the titanium abundance to calculate the uh loss tangent of the radar signal and uh, it uh, actually matches very well so i don't think uh, water ice was the major contributor of the signal loss here why rover did not use a 1.3 gigahertz sensor actually for the martin rover we will use the high frequency range uh, about uh, one gigahertz range for the Martin rover. All right, that answers all the questions that we had. Thanks a lot, Yi, for your presentation. And okay. I hope we yeah. learn more about uh, the lunar subsurface and Mars data whenever it comes uh, next year. And so good luck with that. And thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks again. Yeah, okay. Thank you for attending. Yeah, this was great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. See you in uh, two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.